whole idea is to actually provide two uh, agendas to work with unemployed young people who have difficulties or facing barriers. This is where the Young Women's Empowerment Project came into existence because we identified there was a group of uh, young women who needed um, support and assistance to move them on in terms of their ambitions and and um, dreams really. It's a, a passion behind understanding um, people's limiting beliefs and how what challenges that they may face and how to turn limiting beliefs into empowering ones. From talking to the young women um, and the life coaches at YMCA, I identified that they wanted more activities to engage the young women. Um, the minute I mentioned that I'm a makeup artist, their eyes just lit up and they were like, oh, can you teach us how to contour? And I was like, of course I can. But my niche and my motive behind it was to do something that was inside out, so work on them from, from a confidence level. So a makeup, I did a makeup and positive self-image workshop, um, and which involved the covering of social media pressures that young people are facing at the moment, which is a big, big topic. And I think the passion came from the point of view that I would have loved this advice when I was that age. And for me, it's about using my hindsight as their foresight, really. For me, the, the programme itself, the on-track programme, um, it involves uh, Elisa Bernardo's initiative funded by Santander. There is that multi-agency approach, so I think the ward itself is not only for Bernardo's, but also the individuals who partake in the delivery workshops. It would mean the world to me because eight out of the 14 girls are now in um, further employment, training or education, and that to me is a very successful statistics even if one person had life had turned around from it so I'm looking to duplicate that again and do that with Bernardo's next year in March a three-day residential a bit longer um, and for me it just taught me that you know th these kind of activities and needs are, are there they're, they're required the system needs them The nomination is about the equality within the trust. We're a very diverse trust. Um, in fact, probably one of the largest diverse employers within the whole of the um, West Midlands. We're very proud of that. And because of our staff that we employ, being so multicultural, we very much want to focus everything that we do on equality and make sure that our staff feel important because if they feel important, our patients will also feel important. The partnership working between the Trust and trade unions has uh, brought about um, an inclusive culture to enhance and create a, a culture of um, inclusivity and diversity to represent our workforce and also our patient base. The trade unions have worked very close with management on many of the projects that have gone forward. Um, we're very proud to say that we've now got three self-organised groups within the Trust. We have, we've had a LGBT team for quite a while, but it's been a very diverse group. It's now out and proud, we're all proud to say. We've got a BME group, um, and although we've had a BME group for quite a while, the BME group is really working with the management and the trade unions about really looking at our culture, our policies, our procedures, and what we can do. One of our recent surveys showed that there was a, uh, there was a, a direct correlation between the degree of um, awareness and involvement in the trust diversity and inclusion initiatives and um, the morale of staff. So I think that's been a, a huge, that's had a huge positive impact on, on our workforce. I just think we have done so much that we deserve the opportunity for our staff to shine through. I think it is so important that we put, and the board have put, equality firmly on our agenda. The Academy uh, is basically a partnership of the trusts within the Black Country. The Academy came together to try and support those trusts in delivering apprenticeships in each of the trusts. Um, supporting the local community into roles and into future employment within the NHS. I guess the initial success was actually bringing very separate trusts who have different missions, who have different um, outlooks together and to working onto a common theme uh, to agree common standards, uh, standards of excellency, uh, standards of recruitment, things like that. And then we moved out into the community where Although the NHS is one of the biggest employers of apprenticeships, um, its, its profile is not particularly well known in that area. 
Uh, there's a lot of illusions that it's employment in the NHS is just doctors, it's just nurses and not really understanding what, what other services are available, what other employment's available and the different elements that, that are around there. So we went out in the community working with schools, working with colleges, working with the job centre, uh, working with charities who work, who work with young people who are quite removed from the workplace and from training and really supporting them into finding a pathway. What we attempt to do is to actually find an employment after that. So at the moment we're running about 90% of our apprentices find long-term future career roles within, within the NHS. We perhaps, one, th one thing that we found on is, is that we, we, we don't kind of wave the flag of the work that we do. Um, I'm very fortunate, I have a very committed team who are very passionate about the work that they do, who work very hard, very tirelessly, and whose main aim is to help young people into apprenticeships and to support them through that apprenticeship to ensure they get the best, the best training, the best opportunities and the best career pathway. And from a, 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 a different perspective, again, it just helps us with our profile to promote the fact that the NHS is out there, it's employing young people, um, there's lots of opportunities, lots of fantastic opportunities.